What's up guys, just a quick heads up that the music was blocked in this video due to copyright, so I have muted the audio. However, I have provided a link to the song in the description, so you can open a new tab and listen to the song alongside with my reaction. Or you can just join me on Patreon for unedited footage. But for now, enjoy the video guys. Hey, what's up everyone? Welcome back. How you doing? Hello. Thank you for being here. Thank you for showing up. We're going to finish up our album listen of Tego Mago by Can, released 1971. We're going to move on to the final two tracks, Pecking O, and Bring Me Coffee or Tea. Which do you prefer, coffee or tea? It's a simple question, but it's a question for the ages. Personally, I think I, I switched because in my childhood I used to prefer tea. Now, I'm definitely more of a coffee person, but I can take either or. Uh, speaking of either or, last time we had listened to Om. <laughs> which I definitely had a strong reaction to. Definitely was not my favorite track on the album. Gone were the smooth rhythms, the slightly distorted and echoey sound of the tracks before and thrown into an abstract painting by Salvador Dali. We were. Uh, <laughs> now, some of you had said that Pecking O, I don't know about Bring Me Coffee or Tea, but Pecking O kind of follows a similar suite or suit. Can I tell you, I listened to Om again while I was setting up the room and... I don't, I don't hate it, I don't think, on a second listen. Because I'll admittedly, I have not listened to Om since the first time. I was going to give chances, like in multiple places, I just, I didn't. I didn't, I couldn't bring myself to it. But I listened to it again while I was setting up everything. And I still don't enjoy it. But I got used to it. <laughs> Maybe that's the best way to describe it. Because usually after I listen to a track here, I'll listen to it again on my own in different circumstances and situations. Um, but this one, admittedly, I did not. I did not listen to Om again. But yeah, it exists. Uh, so let's move on to the next two tracks. Finishing out the album, Pecking O, Bring Me Coffee or Tea. I'm hoping we get some more drums, some more Liebjit. I'm, I'm hoping, maybe. Just give me a little bit of him. But let's go ahead and get into it. Pecking O, Bring Me Coffee or Tea. Before we let it move on to the last song, before we go on, I think we we have to stop. <laughs> we have to stop and talk about this. Packing Out immediately is a hundredfold, in my opinion, more interesting than Om. There's a lot more going on here. There's a lot more to chew on. It's just a lot more interesting. I like the direction that Pecking takes over Om. It's just infinitely more interesting to listen to. It's more intriguing. This track, I don't even know if I should say song. This sound installation has so many different facets and parts and sections to it that it keeps me entertained, at least. I'm not going to lie, I still have to get used to this kind of sound, and I don't want to say I like it, but I don't I don't dislike it. Like I said, pecking, like, there's something there. So I might just have to get a little bit more used to it, you know? Maybe the shock of Om compared to the other tracks before kind of, you know, I mean, that's a first listen, it's an initial reaction. I don't know exactly how I'll feel after. But with Pecking, I just feel like there's a little something more to hold on to. So the intro here, I can only describe as this feeling. You know that if you're walking in a city, in a town, on the streets at night, and there's no one else around you, but suddenly you get that feeling in your back, like there's someone somewhere either behind you or watching you. Or you even get up from bed in the middle of the night to go get a glass of water. And you know your house, so you know where to walk without running into anything. And you know you're alone, but you get that one little feeling like maybe, just maybe you're not. That kind of suspense is what I feel in the beginning of this track. I think that that sets you up really nicely. And like I said, I do think that here in the beginning of Pecking, let me pull it up just a little bit, I think it gets you more, like, 
engaged than the previous track. The way that the drums begin to steadily rise, of course, Damo, the way that he <laughs> shrieks out uh, just undiscernible words and such, which become even more indiscernible later on. <laughs> I actually think hold this track together. It was actually nice to hear Damo, especially in the beginning, because the way that he just kind of calls out here, sorry, there's like a cat here, here, is actually what I was latching onto. And then as I was holding onto Damo, the noises from Suke and, and Schmidt, yeah, Schmidt, uh, were just kind of moving around, rotating around me. And I was allowed to focus on Damo's voice while still allowing those sounds to wash over me, harsh, distressing, and abstract as they may have been. Some of the sound here got pretty smooth. Like you got the organ in there from Schmidt that actually laid down a little bit of a melody. I don't remember exactly where. I don't remember exactly where, but it grounded me. There was a little bit of melody in that line. And it reminded me of David Sylvian's later works. And I know that Sylvian and Suke had worked together. Um, I think the album was called Flux and something. Mutations? Mo motions? Flux and something. It was too, I don't know. It was actually a pretty good album. Um, but it, it, it reminds me of the dissonance and the emptiness and the hollowness of Sylvian's later works. Gone are the lush production and the, the poetry surrounded by these, you know, be beautiful, just gorgeous instrumentation and arrangements. And now we're left in like these hollow halls. The music here is kind of similar. So the first part sets you up with that, like that distress feeling in the dark, right? Then this, this little electronic beat comes in, still filled with distressing sounds and such, but once again, it's a rhythm, it's a beat. Call me a millennial, but it's something I can hold on to. It's something I can latch on to. As long as there's a beat, I'm, I can latch on to that and everything else can just flow right around me and I'll generally be okay. So I like that. It actually even reminded me a little bit of uh, Kraftwerk and their sound. So there's this cool connection between like Kraftwerk, Berlin School of Music and Berlin, I think it was just called Berlin School. Uh, and here with kraut rock, you know, it's just this really cool connection between the rock and the abstract feel of it and the electronic and it's all kind of coming together. And with the album so far, we've gotten this really beautiful mixture of that. So I thought that this, this was really cool. I even like the way that the piano dances around it. it. It sounds very scattered, very distressing, very dissonant, but that beat is still there. So I'm personally engaged no matter what. Now I'll admit. Dama was the thing I held on to in the beginning of the track, but he was also the thing that I let go of at the middle. <laughs> this, that, that, that's, that's not personally for me, to put it in the least. That's, that's just not personally for me. I, I kind of understand and in a way admire what they're doing. I, I don't want to say I like, but I appreciate the way that Damo is engaging with the piano with this really <laughs> scattery runaway in the dark kind of piano like a mice in midnight or like a, a mouse at midnight just kind of running through this empty hall that's what i feel with the piano and then the drums come in which is actually really cool i really like the way that those drums come in like it's so heavy let's skip all that let's come back to the abstract and eventually the beat still a very glitchy and twitchy beat which is it must be really interesting how they actually approached and made that like I'm imagine that's pretty much uh, Suke that's pretty much doing all that but I think that the approach to it was really interesting to see uh, the approach to the music is really interesting to see this kind of gets back to their earlier jams even the sound that big drum sound and how it echoes and rings out between the walls it's just really cool all right, there's this hair, like, it's, it's like right here. That is, oh my God, that's annoying. Anyways, let's go ahead and let it lead itself into the last track of the album. Hold on, you hear that? My neighbors just pulled up. Let's go ahead and lead, <laughs> lead into the last track of the album. Finish this one out. Bring me toffee, toffee. I like toffee too. Bring me coffee or tea. Let me get to the last few seconds of pecking. And we'll let it go. And 
and so ends Tego Mago with a little bit of a whispery bang. And what I mean, like, that track is exciting, especially from a drum perspective. I love Jackie's drumming. I love it. From, from listening to the, be the beat during the verse to the ending of it, and, of course, that big culmination, the way that he just lets loose, whoo, let loose those dogs of war. This track immediately is the sound that I like from Can that we've heard before. Okay? Excellent drums. Beautiful melodies that are both kind of like what I mentioned before, hollow, a little abstract, not quite turned up to the, you know, <laughs> to the, the settings as the previous tracks, but still enough to make it so unique. I love the production in here. I love Damo's singing and his, his soft, whispery, in the back of the drums, like he's behind everybody kind of tone. Like I said, once again, the production is really nice. The guitar playing, it kind of reminds me of a sitar in some ways, just in some of the ways that the bends are done and you know the notes that are played but it's so tasteful it's so exciting you hear little bit little bits of bass that come on through every once in a while it's always there but it's when it sparks just a little bit more a little bit extra that i find it's, it's really interesting but it's the drumming the pattern i really like uh, uh the pattern that he chooses to drum with here because if you listen he kind of starts somewhat typical he might delay the snare a little bit but then he always gets into that right to left kind of roll. He goes a little bit extra on the hi-hats, then he gets into the toms. And then later on, of course, he just expands that and elongates it into just, <laughs> just madness. A little bit, like a little peak of madness. Let me come back a little bit here. But see that, he kind of always plays around with that roll. He play, that's such a solid pocket. But he always comes back to that a little bit of extra on the hi-hat, and then just left to right. Did I say right to left? I hope not. But <laughs> unless he's playing it a different way. And then, like I said, when we get to the ending, he just kicks up the rolls. Just rolling thunder. Throughout the track, especially at the end, like you just heard, you hear a little bit of saw, kind of buzzy sound. I want to say that's probably synth. Maybe the guitar? I'm not sure. Or organ, I guess it could be. Could be Ermin Schmidt, or it could be Michael Caroli. Either way, someone's doing that little buzziness, and I like it. It's like, honeybees, I'm here. In a good way. It's not like a fly. Never mind. <laughs> not even go there. Let me back it up just a little bit, though, here. They play around the emptiness, big crashes. And once again, you hear Donald in the back there, just kind of slowly pushing, perhaps not even pushing, more like asking the groove to move along and the music to move along and the song to move forward until its end. This was a really, really good album. Like I said, I especially like the first four tracks. I really like Bring Me Coffee or Tea. Um, um <laughs> and then Pecking O. I definitely understood and appreciated a lot more than Um, but I'm still gonna have to kind of get used to those two tracks, you know? I also just realized I didn't look at any of the lyrics from before, so I apologize about that. Let me go ahead and back myself on up to Pecking O. We'll look at those lyrics really quick. They're kind of repetitive. Drive my way to, drive my way back to yesterday. The night never sleeps. Driving my way back to yesterday. Says I carry a heart. Mama gonna eat, mama gonna eat, papa gonna eat. Um, gibberish. <laughs> That's what it says. It says gibberish. Where else can I go? Where else can I go? Got to get a party. West Garden. Hot, hot. Got a party. Paris and the bodies in America, and we have each other together. It's warning, it's support, it's truth. Leave where you are and go to where the party's at. That's that's pecking up. That that's <laughs> bring me coffee or tea. You just smile at me. You're just on my knee. Bring me coffee or tea. Call me pretty little bee. Whisper in my ear. You're still my parents' friend. Throw me out of my bag. You ask me, are you dead? I feel pretty in the chimney. I feel pretty in the chimney. Well, at first I thought it was like a parent talking to their kid, right? You're just on my knee, bring me coffee or tea, call me pretty little bee. Whisper in my ear and you're still my parent's friend. You ask me, are you dead? Dead. You just smile. I don't, I got no idea. I'm not even going to try. Cool album though. 
<laughs> let me know what you guys thought of it. Let me know what you thought of these two tracks. You can, of course, let me know in the comments down below. You can follow me on Twitter, where occasionally I post. And you can follow me on Patreon, where I post more than occasionally. And um, that's it. That's the album. Hope that you enjoyed it. Thank you for watching and listening alongside me. And I hope that you come back tomorrow. I'll see you guys later. Bye.